Hey guys, welcome back to the Hash Raptor YouTube channel. Hope you all are doing great. Today, this is gonna be a farm vlog video, just kind of a daily vlog video of what's going on here. And this is what we've got. So recently I was able to pick up two new 1660 Supers, and this is the MSI Gaming X 1660 Super. This is a model that I have not had in the farm before. And I got two of them. I picked both of these up for a little over right at about $450 US each. Now, for those of you that are new to the channel or you're new to mining, what the 1660 Super and the 1660 Ti is really known for is efficiency, hash rate, just really easy to manage, really easy to use, very low power graphics card, and the price has always been really good on it. So you should be able to expect somewhere around 30 mega hash. And what I'm looking at market-wise these days, when I'm looking at these 1660 Supers, or actually just about anything, is it seems like the market is hitting about $500 per 30 mega hash. I'm not saying that's the right value. I'm not saying that's where it should be. I mean, these cards, MSRP, if you look back 18 months ago, two years ago, this exact card was going for $229 USD, and you could buy as many as you want. So that being said, based on current hash rate, it seems like everything I find in the market is about $500 per 30 mega hash. And the more that you can get under that, the better the deal you're getting. So these were about 450, like I said, to get added to the farm here. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and pick them up. Now, this is not mining advice, it's not financial advice. So if you wanna kind of run your own ROIs out into the future, it's for you to think about as far as how far Ethereum is gonna go before we hit proof of stake. It also depends on what the hash rate is going to look like, what the difficulty is going to be. Just a lot of variables here. So it's always a little bit of a gamble when you're picking up new hardware. But you know, at least I can sell this hardware. So if I went out and bought Ethereum right now, uh, and then the price drops significantly, there's nothing I can really do about that. But this, I can sell this hardware and I can continue to mine on it, I can participate, I can add security, all that good stuff. All right, so that being said, you guys know that we're fans of the 1660 Supers here. I've got a whole 12 card rig right here. This is the Dark Trooper rig. Up here was one of my first large rigs. Actually, it is my first largest rig. This is a 13 card 1660 Ti rig. This is the Kenobi rig. And it has been up and running for years solid. This has been my most stable rig, period, bar none, of all the rigs that I built. I mean, and the more of these that I build, like this one right here, just it, it continues to show how stable and how such good miners that these cards actually are. So I think what I'm gonna do is I've just been filling in cards into the farm as I pick them up. And I've got this Kenobi rig right down here. If you look, we've got some capacity. We've only got four 16 series cards in here. I think one's a 1660 Ti, one's actually a 1660, not Ti or Super. And then the other two are Supers. We'll go ahead and take a look at the hash rate when we're done just to see what we get. Okay, first card unboxed, and that is a good looking card right there. All right, so here it is, unboxed. You can see dual fans. We've got the standard single HDMI, three display port. We've got a single eight pin on here, and the back plate is a metal back plate. All right, just a quick look inside of Skywalker. You can see we're at about 118.2 mega hash on Ethereum. We're, gosh, 16,700 accepted shares, 100% using NBminer 40.1. So really stable, really stable rig here. And as far as cards go, you can see we've got one 1660, two 1660 Supers, and the one 1660 Ti that I was telling you about. And just to show you those here, it's worth noting that the 1660 is first, right here in the grouping, then the two Supers, then the TI. Now normally if you watch this channel, I always recommend that you put your rig in a maintenance mode before you shut it all the way down and unplug so that you don't have to worry about overclocks getting applied to the wrong cards when you add new cards. But the 1660 Super, everything that I've got in this rig, the overclocks are so similar, uh, it's, it's gonna be fine. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get these connected up and we'll sort out the overclocks and the uh, the location of each card once we get the rig back up. All right, firing the rig up for the first time with these cards connected, and I gotta say they look they look pretty cool. <laughs> the RGB is looking good out here in the shed. Everyone knows you get extra hash rate with good RGB. So check this out. I was able to snag another 1660 Super. 
and this is the Asus Tough Gaming. And with all of the Supers and 1660 Ti's that I've got here in the farm, I actually don't have this particular model yet. So what I'm gonna do is take this and just continue to build out our Skywalker rig right here. And we've got our two MSI Gaming 1660 Supers. I'm just gonna move them over, add one more slot, and we'll be just about good enough to go. Now, one thing I'm gonna have to do after adding these two cards, I'm gonna have to make some additions to my power capabilities here. So I currently have a 1200 watt EVGA platinum power supply that gives me six VGA outs and I've got them split amongst these six cards right here. So again, these are low power GPUs. So I'm able to go riser and GPU split on each PCIe power coming out of this. Now I could do some funky things like using SATA uh, to power risers and just add one more card because I would free up a power cable. But instead of doing that, you can see I've got room to keep adding supers or other cards in that category to this rig. So I wanna be open to filling out this rig over the coming months if I decide to. So since I picked up this uh, this card, and I got it at a good price, by the way. I picked it up just over, I think it right at $370, good price. So to be able to add power capabilities to this rig, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in an HP server power supply, and that'll give us plenty of room to upgrade to add cards in the future, and we won't be constrained by anything. So we'll get plenty of PCIe ports on here. And for those of you that haven't done this before, I cover this in a lot of the rig build videos that I do. But if you're going to use an ATX power supply and you want to signal this power supply to turn on when you power the rig on, you need to add a signal cable here. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the peripheral cable that comes with this power supply that has Molex ports on here. And I've got this adapter that's going Molex to four pin. And that is just going to go from the power supply into this port right here. And what that does is anytime that power is detected on the system, the ATX power supply will signal the server power supply to turn on at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this put in and then I'll be ready to add the GPU and we'll be ready to go. Okay, just doing a test run here. I got the new HP server power supply in and I got the cable, power cable run over to the peripheral port. And because this is, difficult to get back behind here to see the back of this power supply. You can see this one's not on wheels here. I actually had to keep sticking my iPhone back there and taking pictures so I could see where the peripheral port was. And then I actually got it lined up and got it put in there. And I just did a test run. You can see that it powered the board up. So now I need to get some cables added so I can get this new riser and GPU put in here. I think we'll move these over, keep them together, maybe add the new one over here. Single eight pin. DVI, HDMI, and DisplayPort. Okay, we got power cables added down here. We got these two cards shifted over. The new Asus Tough is in and just powered the rig on. It looks like fans are spinning. So I'm gonna hop over to Hive real quick. Let's see how, uh, let's see how the rig looks. So here's just a quick look in Hive. You can see right here, the new Asus GPU showed up and it looks like we've got Hynix memory on this card. Uh, so it is up and mining at the moment. It picked up the overclocks from the card before it Which is okay, but with Hynix memory We're gonna have to do some playing with this and see what we can get the hash rate at check out these MSI cards 32.94 and 31.22 So I think this one up here with Samsung memory I feel like we won a little bit of the silicon lottery there and just so you can see the settings on that we're at 1050 on the core clock, 2450 on the memory, and 80 on the power limit. Almost 33 mega hash on that card. So impressive. It's great for an unmodified 1660 Super. So let me play around with this Hynix memory on this card and see if I can get this hash rate up. Okay, so I just wanted to show you where we ended up with. Pretty good. So on this Asus card, we ended up at 31.77 mega hash. You can see right here. And the settings I used is the same settings uh, that I use on my Dark Trooper rig. If you haven't seen that uh, build, that's a 12 card 1660 Super build, all with Hynix memory. It's one of my favorite builds. If you haven't seen that, go watch that video. And I use the exact same overclock. So 9.30 on the core clock, 
minus 1004 on the memory because it's Hynix. One of the things that's interesting to me is this MSI Super has Hynix memory as well, but it did not respond to the same overclocks. I had to use kind of the standard 1660 Super overclocks that you would see on like Samsung or Micron memory. Uh, but it's still hashing away pretty good here. So yeah, we've got these three cards added. Everything is looking solid here on this 16 series rig. That puts us at a total of 215 mega hash. So this, what, what once was a uh, collection of random 16 series cards is now becoming a respectable hashing rig here. And I went ahead just for fun and threw some numbers in what to mine here. So we are at, what did we say, 205 mega hash. The rig is at 550 watts at the wall. Now that includes the system components along with uh, each of the cards, risers, and so forth. So a pretty low powered build. And if we come down here and do a calculate. Now the one thing I will say is the first three cards uh, in this rig, those first, actually four cards, I'm sorry. Uh, the first four cards in this rig and the core components have long since paid for themselves. If you go back to some of the earliest videos here in the channel, I got those in the early days and they've been running for several years now. So I'm not going to do a total ROI on this rig like I normally would with a new build because most of this is paid for. But what I will say is with the three new cards that we added, let's see here, let's hit calculate. Our daily earnings, let's see here, mining Ethereum, $7.65 before we pay for electric, which we are gonna hodl that. And if you were paying electric daily, uh, $6.33 is the total earnings on this rig. So I love it. I mean, another great little rig we got going here. And if I can keep picking up these 16 series cards I mean now between three and four hundred dollars I'm gonna keep doing it and just add to this rig right here as we play chicken with proof of stake so anyway um, you know not a complete new rig build but hopefully you enjoy seeing this kind of stuff us adding some power supplies and how we kind of manage the farm here I intentionally kept a rig here for overflow and to make sure we had space for expansion when deals like this came up so hopefully you guys like this kind of content got any questions or comments Put it in the comments below. We'll see you in the next video, Raptors. Take care. Let them know who you are. Flying up in a bar. Wish on a star.